Shalom. I'm Rabbi Michael Panitz. I'm the rabbi of Temple Israel of Norfolk, Virginia, and I'm speaking to you from the pulpit of our congregation. This time, I'm speaking on the theme of you don't win every time. You don't win every time. We are told that in real estate, the three most important factors, so to speak, are location, location, and location. That is also true for Bible narratives. Some narratives, however fascinating, are often overlooked because they happen to be in a textual location just before or after another still more compelling biblical passage. I strive to let the often overlooked texts in the Bible have their say. This year, one such passage has called out to me, the account of the failed overture by Moses to the king of Edom, seeking permission to transit that kingdom. Despite a generous offer by Moses to compensate the Edomites for any water consumed, Edom's answer was blunt and backed by force. Numbers chapter 20, verse 20. But he said, you shall not cross. And Edom went out to meet him with a heavy host of fighting people and with a strong hand. Denied permission, Moses avoided battle. Instead, he accepted the reversal and took the Israelites far to the east to skirt that kingdom and approach the promised land from the east bank of the Jordan River. The summary statement encapsulating the entire narrative makes no attempt to gloss over the failure. The book of Numbers chapter 20, verse 21. So Edom refused to give Israel leave to cross through his territory, and Israel turned away from him. It is intriguing that other biblical voices, such as Psalms 135 and 136, pass over this narrative while focusing on the glorious victories over hostile kings, Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan. But the voice in the biblical chorus that we have preserved here in Numbers 20 is intent on reminding us that life is not only a series of victories. This passage with its sober wisdom has much to teach nations and individuals. Indeed, in our communal and in our personal lives, we ignore its message to our own detriment. When I came of age, the Vietnam War was raging. It had become unpopular a majority of Americans concluded that it was an unjust cause and a source of curse for American society. Why did we not cut our losses and disengage? The rhetoric of that day was that America had never lost a war and no American leader wanted to be the first one to preside over a loss. I do not recall preachers from that era reminding us that even Moses had political reverses. Perhaps this biblical narrative should have spoken to us more loudly back then. More recently in America, we have seen an attack on the integrity of our election system that at its heart stems from an inability to accept that sometimes one loses. Turning from the political to the individual, what of the large number of business initiatives that never take off? We seem to be seduced by the ideology expressed artistically in the movie Field of Dreams that, quote, if you build it, they will come. Well, that is sometimes true, but not always. And as a mantra, it becomes a dangerous dodge when clear-sighted analysis would serve us better. The Bible is the enemy of self-delusion. It reminds us that we can abuse our free will and listen to false prophets, but we cannot make the false into the true. Indeed, in its own day, 
when the Bible was still being compiled, those prophets we consider the true ones were unpopular. People preferred to listen to the soothing voices of those we now deem to have been false prophets. Only the destruction of the kingdom of Judah and the exile of its people to Babylon lifted the scales from our ancestors' eyes and allowed them to see that God is always with us, but not as an agent for our convenience. I am grateful that the Bible included the unglamorous account of Moses skirting the kingdom of Edom and leading the Israelites in a wide circuit around it. There are times when that is just the lesson that we need to hear. Shalom.